Welcome to Last Said News. My name is Rob. Today, I want to talk to you about is just a quick update about what's going on with World Mobile Token. And uh, if you haven't heard me talk about this before, this is one of those crypto projects that has a real use case. This is a World Mobile Token scan. Link in the description. You can find this for yourself. And this gives uh, data, internet usage to the unconnected right now in uh, Tanzania and Zanzibar in Africa. And it looks like the total network consumption over the last uh, day or so is 1.71 terabytes. Now, that's not a, a, an enormous amount in first world countries. But if you've never had the internet, that is a huge, enormous deal. So what I want to do is uh, talk to Mickey Watkins. He is the uh, CEO of uh, World Mobile. And him and his team here, they have over 100 plus years of telecommunications and mobile phone experience just to see why they're doing this and just to give the updates. And to talk about the why, it's very simple. And that is that in the entire world, we've got around seven and a half billion people, give or take. And right now, we've got about three billion people that are unconnected and are just in areas that just do not have the internet whatsoever. And if we keep doing it the old way, uh, it's going to take us till 2050. So what World Mobile did was this. They go, we're going to make this very simple. Instead of putting in those enormous cell phone towers for telecommunications and data, which cost millions upon millions of dollars, which, of course, they'll never be able to recoup because in those different areas that are unconnected are usually poorer, we're going to put in these. They're, they're very small, very simple, and it's called an air node. And that's what's going to give these people access. So once this goes into the areas where people actually uh, live and are unconnected, once this is already set up, the, the person that is living in these areas will go to their local shop. They will buy a card uh, that will give them access uh, to the World Mobile Token app. Once they have access to that and they've paid for it, now they're going to download the World Mobile Token app because they have finally have access. That's going to give them a digital ID. And they're going to have access to these different apps, talk, text, financial service apps, which will give them access to the global economy, which is pretty big. But the question then is, well, why don't they just keep using cash or whatever their local currency is instead of using Cardano uh, for uh, access to the network? It's because of this. The infrastructure to have telecommunications is not just just some magical uh, wireless app. You have to have some type of infrastructure that keeps the data, that puts the data out. And the only way to do that is through a sharing economy. And the best way to do that is in a decentralized manner, usually through earth nodes. And of course, we have our air node right here. I think we talked about uh, right in this picture right here. And the earth nodes are people like you and I who run the blockchain network. And what this does is it gives them access to authentication, identity, of course, the blockchain, internode communication, and all the data that you need to store to run the actual business itself. And then just so everybody knows, I am an earth node operator, uh, so I actually have skin in the game. And then lastly, I will just say that there is, of course, we have these uh, air nodes, but if you want a super air node, we can have one of these things called aerostats. These are the ones that are delivering the huge payload. They rise up in the air about 1,000 feet, and they give a coverage around 50 feet. So if you need a, a large area to be covered and you don't have any cell phone towers whatsoever, this would be the way to go. So without further ado, let's break in and talk to uh, Mickey Watkins, the CEO of World Mobile, and see what he has to say about the updates. All right. So everybody, what I want to do is, uh, like we talked about in the intro, just bring in Mickey Watkins just to ask uh, some basic questions. Mickey, thanks for coming back. I think this is like the third or fourth time you've been on the show. I'm a regular and I love it. <laughs> thanks, for having, thanks for having me on again. You are a regular. So I got, I got three big questions for you. So first of all, what's the status of these earth node operators on the IA testnet? I know there's a lot of questions going on there and people want to know. So it's a good thing you're here. We can talk about it. The second one is, is what's happening with branching out to other countries? It's great that we're starting in Africa and Tanzania and you got everything worked up. But I mean, we got 3 billion people to, to help service. So how are things going with that? And then lastly, what are some of the things you're most excited about and not excited about for this year? Like what's hindering progress, that type of thing. So those are the three questions. Let's start with the first one. What's the status? Because I am an earth node operator, Mickey, as you know, and I'm getting a little restless. So tell me what's going on here. Okay. Um, the community is also very eager to jump on. Uh, I believe that tomorrow we, during our AMA, um, which you're more than invited to come to. And so is everybody else listening here. Uh, there will be an announcement from Antonio on the next onboarding process pro for, for Earthnode operators. But we're looking to get everybody onto Testnet uh, really rapidly. Okay. As rapidly as we possibly can. Sounds good. So is there like a time frame we're looking at or just kind of like, hey, we're going for this. 
let's see what happens. It should start next week, I believe. The first the first bunches of people to come on, and then it won't stop until everybody's on. So okay. it will be it will be phased because we learn a lot of information as we bring as we bring people online. Uh, but it will be quite rapidly phased as well. Perfect. We won't so have to wait too much longer. Okay, I'm okay with that. So, so you're telling me that there's going to be no Earth node left behind. That's what it sounds like. No Earth node will be left behind. <laughs> nor, their, nor their operator. Okay, I'll, I'll take it. So that will answer that question. I think people will be a little pleased. At least we're moving in the right direction. That's the big thing. But this was a question that, uh, well, we had talked beforehand, and you had said about branching off in other countries, one of those being the United States. So let's talk about that. How'd that happen? What's the timeline? And why are we going this route? 2022 was really about fine-tuning the sharing economy, making sure that we had the right equipment, testing. We tested maybe 30 or 40 different manufacturers of air nodes and different components that we put together. Um, and exploration, exploration for where World Mobile could go, where it wants to go, and where we're, we wanted it. It was a massive roadshow, as well as deploying and, and getting the Zanzibar network live and building the connections for, for the next couple of years. So we're very privileged um, to have many countries that, would like us to come in and provide the, the Aerostat solution on this side um, and the, the on-the-ground network as well. But we've got to be focused. We've got to be focused because in order for the business plan to work, to build one of the biggest mobile networks, we're going to have to come together. And to come together, we're going to have to make sure that the, the air nodes uh, that operate the network, um, the operation air node that is actually a core of the business, um, where we reduce the capex load um, on any telco and allow us to grow very fast. And the OPEX side of the people that are looking after the, the air nodes and operating them has to work. So in Zanzibar, it's working. Right. Uh, we do have paying subscribers on the network and WMT scan will soon be updated to, to show everybody that. And that's a very exciting moment for us as well. Now we've seen it working in Zanzibar. There's a few strategic countries that we want to go into first. Um, not just because we want to jump straight to B2C, but also because there's wholesale models that can that can really grow the world mobile network super fast uh, by bringing in revenue into the network that then the sharing economy is able to uh, to share. And that, that's that's the whole model behind what we're doing, right? We're connecting the unconnected because we believe that everybody has the right to to connect to the internet. But I also believe that the big MNOs also believe that that's a right. They just don't know how to do it. Our model is um, is something different. And moving into other countries, moving into Asia, moving into North America, uh, and moving into other parts of the African continent is, is very exciting. And 2023 is about cementing, uh, making sure that we stick to our roadmap um, and hopefully over exceed the expectations of the community um, and the people that are inside this sharing economy. So USA is very exciting, uh, but so is the Asian country and the African countries that we're, we're operating in as well. Right. Got it. I mean, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's super exciting. I will just tell you, so when I heard about the USA, I was like, well, first of all, how hard is it to compete to get into the U.S. Yeah. market? Because, I mean, we've got, here, I mean, here in the U.S. and here in Puerto Rico, we, I mean, you've, got, you've got the T-Mobiles, you've got the AT&Ts, you've got the Verizons and everything else that's out there. So, like, how hard is it to compete? So in there? It's no? so hard. Like, I don't know why anybody would compete. It's completely oversaturated. But... <laughs> And um, whilst it's oversaturated, that's in the connected areas. In the underserved areas where the Swiss whole, Swiss cheese problem uh, exists and, and in the rural areas where there's absolutely no coverage, um, then there's, it's not competition. Our, our, our radios, our antennas, our, our equipment, our infrastructure can really go further than, than ever before than anybody else has. And, and the model is really exciting. So we're not competing, uh, competing at all. We're, we, you know, we're complementing and actually just providing cellular coverage where where underserved areas um, don't have the right amount of coverage they should have or none at all. Right. Yeah, I've got a place. So I have a sports facility on the outskirts of uh, El Paso, Texas, El Paso County. And it's kind of spotty out there. So I can see that would be one of those areas that potentially could be serviced. I could see that uh, that happening. Okay, I guess so that's, you're, that's what you're we're gonna going to be. A, you're going to be an end node owner and an end node operator by the sounds of it. Yeah, so apparently it's going to look something like this, right? Like we talked about, going to have one of these just uh, put put out, maybe a little bit more of a structure, and then uh, have people use these things for telecommunications and mobile service. That's what it sounds like to me. Yep, it's going to look like that with a few more heads on on it as well. Uh, we're going to put it up there, and it's going to it's going to do exactly what it's meant to do. And then you can see how. If you put enough of these in areas where there is underserved areas and people yeah. can seamlessly connect as they pass through on their phone, roaming customers and your own customers, right. um, 
it's it can quickly rack up uh, adoption. Yeah, I think it'd be the big one with with the roaming, especially if people have have the roaming service on. Okay, so it makes a lot of sense, especially I mean underserved areas and of course the Asian countries. I mean, there's a lot of different places that have no uh, no service, from what I understand. So I guess that will lead me to my last one. I mean, we already talked about the countries, but what are you excited about now moving into 2023? You guys done a lot of work over the last couple of years. And we, I think we did our first video at least a year and a half ago. So now we're already at this point where we have, we have a working product. But what are the things that are hindering you? And what are you more excited about moving forward in 2023 and 2024? Bothering me is the is the aerostat, but this is just time. It's no it will, everything that we are meant to have done. We we've done, um, and I'm looking very much forward to to launching that baby, and uh, and, and seeing it fly or float. Um, very excited about the mobile application. We've got some really surprise features there for for the community and for the wider crypto crypto environment. Um, and I'm super super excited uh, of where we're going to be in in June uh, or July when the antenna. The, the final model is out there and uh, we can put that up on the aerostat and we've actually got um, uh, the beginning um, the beginning of the end of the dynamic network because we'll have some nodes laid down uh, strategically in order to function with the aerostat and coordinate from the ground um, and we'll be able to show something that nobody's ever done before that's actually massively useful to to the connecting the unconnected uh, and not only show it you know we're not looking particularly to sell this product we're we're looking to utilize it and build this network from it so it's, it's a super exciting. And then whatever else 2023 has in store for us. You know, we're trying to stay super focused. Uh, we've got a very big team now. Uh, we, we, we learned a lot from, from 2022. And uh, we're, we're looking forward to taking that forward. But th you know, this is the year of the Aristat. This is the, the year of, uh, of mainnet. This is the year where the sharing economy actually starts to bring revenue into the network. Hmm. This is where the rubber meets the road or the telecommunications meets the phones. Okay, Mickey, sounds like a good time. So look, uh, everybody who's watching the video, there's a link in the description. You can find out World Mobile Token, World Mobile Team, and everything else that's uh, with it. Mickey, thanks again for stopping by the show. Always good to have you. We'll bring you back when uh, all the new stuff that's uh, coming in. Thank you very much, Rob. See you soon. <laughs>